All right, so welcome everyone. Today we'll be reviewing the work completed in sprints 98 and 99. Um, intro slides, same as always, we've got the teams and what they're working on, um, the team members. I'm gonna skip over, um, we do have a couple of teams with new members, I can find them here. Um, yeah, Concord had a couple of new folks I wanted to welcome. So Yelit Saveta and Ilya are new on Concord. And we have on Firebird also a new developer, Alex. So welcome to the project guys, or welcome to the teams if you are already on the project and just moved teams. Um, those were all the new people. And um, normally I would turn it over to Jakob to give us an update on um, the release timeline but he wasn't able to make the beginning of this meeting. So um, he just let me know that um, things are going well. And if people have questions about um, the Goldenrod release, then they should reach out to, um, on the releases channel, tag Alexi Petrenko, and he should be able to, to provide updates. Um, also wanted to sh show that Alexi has hot off the presses a draft IRIS release timeline. Um, which he said I was okay to include here. So if you want to take a look at that, it is available. All right, so uh, as usual, we have all of the team's highlights here on slides, but we are not going to go through them. We're gonna jump straight to the demos. And um, we have an exciting demo today. Kicking us off is our first demo from Benevolence, which is the team from um, Shanghai Public Library. So I am going to turn it over to Lucy to give a quick introduction and then we'll um, jump right into the demo. Sure. Thank you, Kate. Uh, the Benevolence team is helping Shanghai Library to prepare for its go live. And in addition to the ES project to be demoed, the team also did some other projects, but the ES project received most attention. Uh, thank you, the Benevolence team for developing the ES modules for us. Uh, we look forward to seeing your demo. With that, I will just hand it over to Zhu. Thank you. <clears throat> Great, thank you, Lucy. Zhu, are you ready? Uh, did we lose him? See? Hey, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. You can start, get started, yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Yan Ziyu from Suzhou Jiatu Technology Company. Now, I would like to introduce to you some work we have done in this stage. In this stage, we completed the development of three modules. These modules include RMD Kafka client module, data loader ES module, and module search ES module. The first module is RMD Kafka client module. This module integration is a function of RMD and Kafka. We can, we can configure listeners, and when we add the instance, we can get the instance data. Then we will send the instance data to Kafka, and when we can use data loader EX, Let's send the message and send the message to the elected search. The second module is the data loader ES module. This module has the following functions. First, we can generate our, our elected search index through the database configuration, include customs, the member of silence, member of copies, map, mapping field type, analyzer, and the token, tokenizer. Second, we can export the database and the data through the program. After the data cleans completely, we can import the elect search through this configuration converter. converter. Third, our program also integrates the Kafka client, which can receive and consume Kafka message in, in attention. Data clean is created out through the converter to send a message in Kafka to elect search. The third module is mode search ES module. This module provides the in interface associ associated with our, our 
select search. We can return to the front and through the query query to carry the data. Let me show you a new instance in our folder system and the, and the send the data to, to ES elected search, as well as our, our instance and the holding in our folder system. This data have been import, important into our elected search by data loader ES, and we can search the, through the mode search ES module. Now I will introduce the now, now I will introduce to, to you to show my program. Now it's uh, it's instance module, and we we knew a module. We can we can add the title, such as Java study, and we can choose the data source type, book, and we save. Okay, we will see. We will see the data in my ES. Okay, we, we can see the see the uh, uh, data in my yes, and uh, we can We uh, we can we can search uh, some data in my folio system. So this data are in yes elected search.
So we can choose the title such as Java and we can search. We can see the title and there's all the, all, all the, all the title uh, include the Java title such as uh, all the or the publisher such as the superior Uh, it's slightly misspelled Springer. The I and the R need to be swapped. Uh, we can see you, we, we can find the Springer. That's all, all I want to show. Really nice. So, so the, the first part of this presentation is to show that we can use the uh, we can use the uh, uh, interface uh, UI to create new items, and this items data is uh, important to our search engine. And uh, this the search in. in uh, interface, uh, we uh, direct uh, search the data from the elect search instead of uh, progress. So that that is what what we want to show uh, for for this presentation. If you clicked on one of these titles in the results, does it take you to inventory? Or does it not do anything yet? Mm. Not yet. This is maybe just to show that it's that the searching is possible. Yeah, we 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 have uh, we have um, uh, I, I think uh, for 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 no uh, for other uh, modules uh, this search is. Uh, it's done by by Postgres Circle database, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but but it, what we are seeing, what what we we have, what, what we are showing is this searching is done by um, like search, not mm -hmm. uh, Postgres. So uh, including uh, uh, what are we talk about uh, tokenizer filter uh, is configured configured. Uh, in database, not uh, not just uh, hard coding. So um, we can, uh, if any module want to use the uh, Excel module, it, it could be just uh, in, uh, import imported our uh, modules into uh, is this module want to use it and do some configuration, and uh, it should be. Uh, fine to use uh, your search. So uh, we we think uh, with our module we can cut most of the coding for uh, for integrate integrate uh, your search engine. Great, and I guess that kind of answers Owen's question in chat. He was asking if the same modules could provide ES indexing for things other than inventory. Um, Anne-Marie asked a question as well. She asked, um, with Elasticsearch, is the total for search results an accurate count or an estimated count? Do you have that already implemented? The, the hit count for the number of results? Yeah, we, it's, it's total, it's total count. Uh-huh, is it exact or an estimate? Uh, it, it's exact, exact. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. 
That's great. And could you say just a couple words about the status of this of these modules? Are these you know merged into the main line, or is this sort of still in development? I'm pretty sure this is not in, this is not included in the the honeysuckle release. Am I right? Mm. Um, may I jump in, Kate? Yeah, uh, that'd be great. Uh, it is not merged uh, and it's not included in the next release, but mm -hmm. the community has already had a bigger plan for the Elasticsearch project. Mm -hmm. And the team will build upon the codes the benevolence team contributed mm -hmm. and add more stuff. So, great. yeah, this That's is part of the big, bigger picture, yes. Yes, I just so, wanted to clarify uh, that. Now, we case. do not have. So for now, we our cutting do not have a uh, multi uh, uh feature. So <laughs> we we should add it uh, on it. Got it. Okay, Brooks has a question in chat. He asks, "Is the Kafka client generalizable? Will it be part of RMB?" Yeah, uh, I think uh, 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 same modules. Uh, so uh, if any any module that uh, using RMB could could uh, easily shift to uh, our uh, Elasticsearch um, Elasticsearch modules, it's it's quite easy and. Uh, um, I think it could be done just by config and uh, just a little coding work. Great. Uh, we have uh, it's it's uh, by now it's not a part of RMB. We have done some modification to RMB, and uh, this coding is. Uh, it's not merged into RMB, but I think uh, it might be. It might be a way to uh, to to join to join. It might be a way, but but by now it's not. Okay. Are there any other questions for the benevolence guys? All right, well, thank you so much for showing that. I know it was a lot of work and it's um, very much appreciated by the community, as you said. Um, I guess we will be building on what you've developed here to bring Elasticsearch to the product. So thank you. Uh, okay, so the next demo is Thunderjet. Um, Dennis, did you wanna start? Are you going up second? Um, I appreciate that. Thanks very much. Yeah, I'm going to go <laughs> second, actually. Uh, oh. Andre, if he's ready, he's going to start in inventory, and then we're going to move into the finance app. Got it. Um, all right, Andre, it's all yours. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Hello. Let me share my screen. I believe you can see it. So. I'm going to present uh, some new features uh, in inventory that our team was working on during the last sprints. Uh, so let's select um, test instance uh, that I was that I prepared for this demo. And uh, here we can see details uh, and uh, five holdings uh, with the same location. It's annex and the same uh, call number. So uh, it's. Uh, was it uh, new information? It's a copy number of holding. So now it's possible to identify it. And uh, it was uh, done by request of University of uh, Chicago. So the next thing is a uh, new column on item list. It's uh, also copy number. So it's sortable and it provides uh, more information about uh, item. Uh, one more feature on uh, inventory, it's action menu. And here we can see <clears throat> new 
few items. It's your requests, and uh, in brackets we can see the number of uh, open requests. If uh, if uh, there is no items uh, in holdings and instance, um, uh, the section uh, will uh, does not appear. And if we click on it, we'll see the list of uh, requests. Uh, Items with the request, the request queue says us uh, what's uh, the number of it. And if we click on it, we'll go to request and see selected request. And uh, one more thing I want to demonstrate that if we click on uh, barcode, we'll see item details and uh, since uh, uh, this item is in, in transit, so we added uh, the destination uh, point. So we'll see not only the status in transit, but uh, you can see uh, the destination of transit of item. Uh, I think that's it from my side. Uh, thank you, Denis. You can proceed. Nice work. Thanks very much. Okay, I'm going to try and share here. So the next thing that we'd like to show has to do with the expense class functionality. And we showed a little bit of the expense class functionality in the last sprint demo. So I'm not going to touch too much on that. Um, but having implemented some of that expense class functionality, we ran UAT session in our Scratch environments. And this kind of highlights a bit of the success of that as well. So we're looking at a finance record here, the fund. This fund for African history has a budget for the current fiscal year. Uh, there's $21,000 allocated here. And we've actually assigned two expense classes to that budget, one for electronic and one for print, just for the purpose of this example. Uh, so there you can see is actually $23 encumbered against each of these expense classes. and if I move on to the orders app, we'll see why. So we have an order here for a resource that we're saying is both print and electronic, just for the sake of this example. So uh, I'll just point out, we've also made a little update here to populate the related invoices accordion. So you'll see that I have an invoice connected to this already. Um, but let's take a look at our purchase order line. And I wanted to show that we now have two expense classes uh, for the same fund associated with this one purchase order line. <clears throat> Excuse me. In UAT testing, we realized that limiting uh, a purchase order line or an invoice to having only one fund distribution from a specific fund was going to limit the effectiveness of expense classes. So you can now, if you have a scenario like this where you might have two different expense classes uh, for a given fund that you want to use for one specific order or invoice, uh, you can do that. So this was some of that important functionality we've added. So this fund we've encumbered uh, twice effectively for this order, but against different expense classes. One $23 against electronic, $23 against print. And if I move over into the inventory, or sorry, the invoice application, uh, I've created an invoice for this particular order. It has one invoice line, and we've got African history being charged for electronic and print, two different values. I can approve the invoice, which generates the voucher. And we've also now completed the functionality that integrates the uh, expense classes into what we're doing with vouchers. And voucher, the voucher is the record that ultimately is sent to a business system. So if I view the voucher here, we now see that uh, it's clearly identified that in this, uh, in this case, we're assuming that the business office wants to know about the expense classes we're using um, because we have extension numbers associated with those expense classes. And we see all of that stuff now appear in the voucher. So we know that uh, we're charging African history, electronic, and the external account number associated with that is the funds external account number plus the extension number for the expense class. And so those two things are identified on the voucher and they would be exported out in our batch voucher. Uh, 
so actually a lot of back end work went into to making that possible. And I want to thank the guys for all of that. And that's it for us today. Great. Thanks, guys. Uh, OK, so um, Spitfire is up next with Dennis. Oh, yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, so today I'm going to present you some of the features that uh, Spitfire team has been working on uh, these past two sprints. So um, let me share my screen. Uh, I think that's it. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so uh, the first thing is that um, we have added uh, ability to filter uh, users by their department. So um, I think uh, in the previous demo, we have uh, shown um, that uh, we have added a department uh, field in uh, users. So let me just create uh, a couple of uh, fields. Uh, quickly and another one yeah so we have two, two departments now and you can see if I reload the page but now we have this department uh, multi-select component here and you can see that it has two options so let me go to some user and uh, change their department. So let's um, edit and assign here. Um, where is it? Do, do, here. Um, assign here may be art. Oh, and yeah. And for different user, we'll use a different department. Department, department, here. And assign history. So now if I clear the search and the search by department, it should give this first user that we have with department art. Uh, and if I add another history department, this should uh, give a search of uh, um, of users that have uh, a department either art or history. So it's either or uh, type of search. So um, I guess that's all regarding the search and user by department feature. Another one is uh, we have uh, added ability to remove agreements from e-holdings packages uh, and resources. So let me show you. Um, here in holdings, I've uh, assigned a agreement to uh, this package here. And if you go to this uh, agreement page, you can see that uh, I have assigned this package twice. So we have uh, two agreement lines uh, in the agreement page. So if I go back to the package, uh, uh, page and uh, click delete uh, button here. It should uh, give us the confirmation model that uh, tells us that uh, we're going to unassign this agreement from this package. And if we're sure that we want to do that, we can click unassign. And this removes uh, this agreement from the package. And now if I reload the agreement page, um, you should see that uh, we don't have those two agreement lines anymore. So the agreement is still here. All other agreement lines are still here, but uh, this particular um, assignment of agreements to this package uh, is removed. Um, I think uh, that's uh, all I want to demo today. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, ask in chat. So, thank you. Thanks, Dennis. Looks good. OK, so um, Firebird is next. And I guess uh, Steph will do an intro. Hi there. Hi so there. Firebird has been working really hard on the circulation log. Um, we've got um, 
logs going through um, mod audit uh, for loans, notices, and uh, today and other circulation functionality and workflows. Um, but today, uh, Slava will um, show us uh, how it's all working with check-in and check-out. And uh, Slava, let me know if I left anything out. Yeah, okay, thank you, Steph. I just want to show my screen. Uh, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, uh, as Stephanie mentioned, uh, we worked on uh, circulation audit log feature, and uh, today I would like to present to you some particular case related to check-in, check-out for item. So, uh, for this, uh, let's go to the inventory and try to find some checked out item. Uh, we choose status. Uh, for example, we can take uh, this one item. I just copy barcode and uh, try to find some entries in our circulation log, log uh, application. Uh, we have nothing, so uh, for now it's good. Uh, let's try to create a request for this uh, item. Uh, just a moment. Okay. Here we have our barcode and uh, let's choose some user. Okay, we uh, create a request for our item. Uh, now let's go back to the circulation log application and try to find something by item barcode. We see that uh, corresponding uh, entry was created and uh, now let's go to check-in to show how it works. Now I try to check in item by our barcode. Okay. Uh, we see that uh, item was successfully checked out and uh, go back to the circulation log application. We see additional uh, entries related to different operations with uh, our uh, objects in circulation model. So uh, we see that the request status was changed, uh, loan was closed and the item was checked in. Uh, we prepared uh, the description for all these operations. And uh, now uh, we can try to check out this item by barcode. So uh, let's continue with our user and enter our barcode. Now we checked out uh, item and uh, let's go back to the circulation log application. We uh, see all the uh, entries related to our process. So uh, we can use additional functionality uh, for uh, our records. Uh, for example, uh, we can see something related, we can uh, uh, switch to something uh, related to a request, for example. Oh, no. Uh, for a uh, loan, uh, we can try to filter by checked out. And uh, you can see that all this functionality uh, works as expected. So I just need to additionally mention that uh, this is particular case. Also, we worked on uh, uh, different objects, uh, request notices, uh, manual blocks, fees fines. So uh, we are going to present additional functionality probably on the next demo. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you for your opinion. And if you have questions, you can provide 
them in our chat or ask me. Thank you. This looks awesome. It's so cool to see this come together. Is some of this um, going to be released with um, uh, a honeysuckle? Uh, I mean, goldenrod. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We included, uh, but uh, we need to, uh, to provide additional improvements in particular cases. But uh, basically, this uh, functionality was presented. Oh, great. That's awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I stop sharing screen. OK, so next we have Foley Jet with Emery. Hi, everybody. So um, we have a few kind of mainly refinements to show. So Ruslan is going to show uh, that we have added um, support for the holding statements notes that were split into public notes and staff notes um, recently in inventory. We've also refined the import logic for item status field so that you, uh, you can't update certain statuses to other statuses during import, so that you can't screw up like a checked out item, for example. And we've also refined the way that the instance identifier matching works um, after some feedback from some users. And then another uh, big request recently was to be able to stop uh, and uh, remove running jobs that get stuck in the running area. So Igor is going to show that. And I'm going to be quiet now. So Ruslan. Oh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for introduction, and Mary. And uh, uh, let me know if you can see my screen. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, so um, I want to start uh, to demonstrate uh, from demonstration of uh, mapping for public and staff notes for, for holding statements. And um, uh, for this, for it, I'm going to use this job profile to create instance and then associated holdings and item for the for the demonstration. And. Um, Let's take a look at the holdings uh, mapping profile. And uh, also uh, here I'm going to create a new holding with a permanent location as main library. And uh, uh, with uh, this uh, notes for holding statements. Um, uh, earlier uh, here we had only one field for each of holding uh, statements type. And um, according to changes uh, in the uh, holding record schema uh, regarding uh, separation of uh, uh, public and staff uh, holding statement nodes, uh, uh, we made some changes in the mapping profile. So <clears throat> here we have uh additional field for public uh and stuff uh nodes and um uh, as you can see uh for the uh, holding statements uh, i'm going to use uh, uh following the default values such as uh, uh demo statement demo statement for supplement and demo index and uh for the statement nodes uh, for holding statement notes, I'm going to use uh, uh, 504 field from incoming record uh, with uh, uh, A and uh, B subfields for public and uh, staff uh, notes respectively. And uh, uh, for the uh, other statement uh, notes, I'm going to use 505 and 506 uh, fields. And uh, also uh, I have a uh, previously prepared a record with the data uh, for this node with uh, for five, five and five of six fields. Uh, so let's import this record. And 
using instance HRID, we can find created instance and uh, associated newly created holdings. Record. Yeah, so here it is. And let's check <coughs> newly created holding uh, statement nodes from income record. And um, regarding this functionality, that's it. Uh, the next functionality which I want to demonstrate it's uh, item status uh, handling logic. Uh, uh, to be more specific, it's uh, uh, prevention of item status uh, changing uh, during uh, item update. Um, for item st status such as uh, page checked out, uh, awaiting f delivery, and some other. Uh, to demonstrate, demonstrate this verification, uh, I want to update uh, this previously created item, uh, which um, uh, has uh, available status, um, uh, permanent location as main library, location as main li and uh, uh, I want to expand this uh, existing item with uh, item nodes from uh, my another prepared record from file 500 field. So let me check. Let me show a uh, mapping profile for this. So, using this mapping profile, I'm going yeah, to add action node with uh, a value from file 00, zero field. Uh, also, I want to change permanent line type to course reserves, and uh, I want to try to change item status uh, in process. But uh, before item update, I need to um, change uh, item status uh, to one, uh, one of uh, status uh, that are disallowed for update. So I want to change it to checked out status an item barcode and I want to use check out application in this way yeah <clears throat> we have a checked out item status and when we return back to inventory application, Yeah, we can see the status here as as well. So let's import another record. Is it not uploading? Some duration, uh, some duration, I think maybe from UI site. Um, Can you drag and drop? Sure. I don't know what happened. Uh, oh, yeah. And there it goes. Okay. Yeah. Just and slow internet. Update. Yep, <laughs> maybe. And update item. Oh no, have you lost your internet connect? No, you're still talking to us, so we still got internet. Uh, internet. yeah. <laughs> Let's start from scratch regarding item update. <clears throat> yeah. 
let's import file one more time. Uh. Oh, and actually, <laughs> uh, he did a job with a file which oh. uh, I imported before, and uh, I uh, proposed. Uh, to check our item, uh, so our existing item. <laughs> yeah, maybe with uh, yeah, maybe some issue with internet. Um, yeah, it seems like your connection is slow. Yeah, but uh, it works and it's good because we have a newly added action node with test node value from incoming record uh, in existing uh, item. Also, uh, we've changed permanent line type to corks reserves and uh, uh, item status, uh, which is checked out, left as is because it is disallowed for update. And the last one um, thing uh, that I want to show, it's uh, uh, instance matching by uh, identifiers. So this file, the need. And then... Why don't you flip over to the match profile while it deletes? Good idea, thanks. Uh, for the uh, demonstration uh, this functionality, I want to update existing uh, instance um, created from previously import, and uh, I want to find uh, existing instance uh, by uh, uh, OCLC number. And I'm going to use uh, this Mesh profile. All right, for the record, when we practiced today, everything was going nice and fast. Yeah. <laughs> we believe you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Yeah, oh, here, here it is. Yeah. So uh, now actually we have uh, support for different uh, instance identifier types. And but uh, uh, now I'm going to use match by OCLC number uh, from incoming uh, 035 uh, field subfield A. And um, I'm going to change uh, to update catalog date field in the existing instance and instance status term with cataloged value. So let me import one more file with um, with. Uh, uh, OCLC number of existing uh, instance and um, we can, yeah now we can observe some changes yeah and here we have catalog date actually today and uh, in the status term is uh, cataloged yeah so I believe that's it from my site thank you for attention thanks Ruslan and the w one of the reasons we wanted to highlight the identifier matching is that it's um, pretty complicated especially when multiple different identifier types are in the same mark field like the 035 often has a mix of 
OCLC numbers and other kinds of identifiers. So a lot of work to get that to work, that match to work. And Igor is gonna show one last bit. Yes, hello everyone, let me share my screen. Uh, let me know if you see it. Yes. Okay, so for today's demo, I will show you one more piece of functionality, which is related to possibility to remove in stuck jobs. And I've already prepared several jobs. I manually marked them as stuck, made them as stuck. Uh, so we have two different uh, ways to uh, load our records. And uh, the first job is when I load uh, a record using a job profile and the second one is uh, when i upload the job using uh, the secret button so and we have a, a little bit different behavior for each of them uh, so for the first one uh, which was uploaded uploaded by uh, using the job profile uh, when we click to trash icon uh, the one scene, uh, we have 10 seconds uh, to undo this option. In this case, uh, nothing will happen. But uh, in other case, if we, were, if we wait for 10 seconds, so <laughs> let's wait, we can see the text that uh, job has been stopped. And in this case, after 10 seconds, the job is marked as uh, error. We see that it's uh, deleted here and it's appeared on the top of the logs. And in case when we uh, removed the job, uh, which was uploaded by job profile, and when we try to open it, to see, uh, we will see that uh, uh, all records uh, uh, still remain the same. And this job just marked as uh, errors and has status uh, completed with errors. But uh, for, Another job uh, uh, for record, which was uploaded uh, using a secret button, we have predefined job profiles. And in this case, when we try to delete it, so let's wait 10 seconds. <laughs> yep. And uh, after the 10 seconds, we also see on the top of the list, this deleted job, uh, it also has a status uh, completed with errors. But when we try to open details for this job, we will see that all SRS uh, records and uh, Muppet instances in inventory also uh, was deleted. And I suppose that's it from my side. Thank you. And I'll just say this was kind of our first pass. Um, for the secret button, which just creates instances and source records, it's fairly easy to wipe all that out and back us up to where we were before we started the import. For the job profile work, since it can be affecting several types of records, it's not as easy to roll all of that back. So we'll, we'll work on that in the future. We wanted to get something in, at least now, to empty out those running stuck jobs. All right. Yes, I like that, that undo. That's really nice. Yeah. It's the same thing we have for the file uploads. Um, so, uh, so it was a nice way to reuse that same thing. Cool. All right. Thanks, Polyjet. So Concord is next with Magda. Hello, everyone. Uh, Concord has worked uh, for the last two uh, sprints on two remaining Q3 features uh, for data export, which is triggering uh, the inventory instance ex export by providing CQL uh, query and uh, simple and implementation, implementation of simple error logs for jobs that failed or completed with errors. In addition to that, we made some improvements to the mapping profile and grouping holdings and item records. Um, and also 
did some changes on our landing page, on the data export landing page. Andrzej Nowicki will uh, uh, present uh, back-end work and Elizabeth Kochlova will uh, present the front-end work. Uh, Andrzej, are you ready? Yes, hello everyone, this is Andrzej. Please let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Okay, so today I'm going to represent you what our team did in the last two iterations. And so the first thing that I'm going to show you is that we are using the default rules uh, while mapping instance uh, if transformation mapping profile are empty. So let's we'll take a look at the mapping profile that I created. As you can see, a lot of fields, for instance, are present, but transformations are empty. Another thing, uh, we completed the work on grouping, holding, and items, so the relation between them is preserved. If the user selects holding and item data to be included in the uh, markbib record, then fields containing item data will have system populated subfield tree three uh, that will contain human readable ID of holding. So this mapping profile contain holding ID field and item barcode field. Uh, so let's go to inventory and take a look at instance that we will export. Uh, this is semantic web primer. It, can, it uh, has one holding and two items with these barcodes. So let's export this instance with this profile. Choose our profile. As you can see, the export completed successfully. Let's take a look at the mark file. We can just. Are you sure it's not opening on your other screen? Uh, nope, it's not opening. Uh, we can check it for previous export. Something wrong with connection. Maybe testing is overloaded. Yeah, and as you can see, the mark record contains instance fields that this that were in my profile were. Uh, provide the trans empty transformation. Also, it contains uh, 900 field with holding uh, ID and uh, item barcodes with populated uh, subfield 3 with holding human readable ID. Another thing that I'm going to show you is to how to start export uh, by using SQL file. So let's go to inventory. Andre, sorry, please navigate to folder snapshot because folder testing is uh, backend is down oh, for yeah. you. Okay, okay. Then let's go to inventory at folder snapshot. And query some records, for example, by language. Yeah, 32 records is found. So let's save it. Save instances SQL query. Let's check the file. Yeah, it contains SQL query. And let's use it for export process. As you can see, it completed successfully. And let's check the mark file. Yeah, mark file contain all data. Let's see the field count. And yes, uh, it contains 32 records in this file. And that's all about it. And also we did some investigation about how much memory module used to get generated one uh, one file with one million UIDs, and it took near 250 megabytes. That's all. Thank you. Please let me know if you have any questions.
Hi, everyone. I, I will continue uh, talking about uh, Concord uh, work from uh, last two springs. So let me share my screen. Uh, can you see it? Yes. OK, so the first thing I want to talk about is uh, now we have um, the possibility to duplicate map and profiles. And uh, basically, you choose the existing one, uh, click, uh, click duplicate, and it will create uh, the, co the exact copy of uh, picked uh, profile. Um, and you can save it uh, with just changing the name because it's the unique uh, value that have to, its unique value. So you can change only the name or you can, I guess, uh, change the transformation or leave it as it is. So you can save and close and, and now it has uh, the copy. Uh, so for the next one is the small change. We have, um, we rearranged the columns in the job block, so it is now consistent with data import uh, application. Uh, the other big thing we did is um, now we can uh, view the error logs for the jobs that has failed or have completed with errors. So, for example, let's navigate to this one, this failed one. And yeah, on this page, it has the error log for this uh, big job, and it basically contains information about it, like instance UI ID and instance human readable ID. And also if it has some associated holdings with it, it will, it will also have the information about it. And yeah, the error message is right here. Um, also, let's check it for completed with errors, for example. Yet yeah, it, it also contains the, the data about uh, this uh, error. And you, you obviously cannot see uh, an error log for a completed success, successfully job. And that's it from my side. If you have any question, please ask me. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Nice work, Concord. Okay, uh, next up is Vega with Darcy kicking it off. Hi, um, so as you might remember, one of our key features for the Goldenrod release was patron blocks, automated patron blocks. Um, they come into play when maybe a patron has um, too many items that are overdue or they have a large amount of fee fines and all that can be set through settings um, and configured. Um, it's an event driven system. And so the part that we didn't have done last um, quarter was basically syncing any of those old or previous events um, into the mod patron block, um, uh, into the module for, for automated patron blocks. Um, I just wanted to mention too that we're demoing this locally, um, basically because we need to wipe out a bunch of data. So we really couldn't do that on Folio Snapshot. We were planning on using our Scratch instance, but we're having some difficulty with our Scratch instance right now. So we're gonna demo it locally, um, but it is available on Folio Snapshot too. Alex? Yeah, hi everyone. So as Darcy said, uh, mod patron blocks um, collects real-time events related to loans and fees fines and uses this information to decide if certain actions should be blocked for a patron. Well, uh, this real-time nature poses an inherent limitation in the system. By default, it knows nothing about events which took place before mod patron blocks was launched. So, and we want to have those events because without them, mod patron blocks will not be able to see the full picture and calculate more, uh, calculate patron blocks properly. In order to fill this gap, we have introduced the API that gives follow users the ability to build the event history from scratch using the data carefully collected and stored by other modules. Um, so just to set the stage, 
let me show you that currently we have uh, patron block limits configured for patron group faculty and um, uh, patrons members of this group can have a maximum of two items charged out at the same time and uh, an outstanding total fee fine balance of 10. And here we have the user, a member of this patron group faculty. As you can see, uh, this member has one open fee fine for a total of $11 and two open loans, which basically makes him um, exceed both of the limits set up for this patron group. And if we take a look at the patron blocks table, we see that it's true for, for both limits. Now, the reason why this table is not empty is because um, these loans and fees fines were created after uh, Mont Patron Blocks was deployed. Had these loans and fines been created before uh, the deployment of Mont Patron Blocks, this table would have been empty. Um, so let's try and emulate the situation and I will try to show you how we can fix this. In order to do that, I will need to go to the database and delete the events for fees fines and created loans. And now if we go back to the user details page and refresh it, Yeah, it's kind of slow, sorry. Uh, we'll see that um, the user still has the same fee fine for $11 and two open loans. But, well, just a second. Oh, I did not clear it. I just selected, just a second. Coming back, refreshing the page. Yeah, now we still have the fee fine and open loan, but the patron blocks table is empty. Um, that happened because Mont Patron Blocks did not receive events about creation of these fee fines and loans in real time. So in order to fix this, we'll try to launch a synchronization job. Um, we have introduced an open API that will allow the user to do just that. And right now I will try and create a sync job for this specific user. So the request is created. Now if I try and sync job. Um, the job is still in status open. Uh, the processing of these requests runs uh, roughly every minute. So we're going to have to wait for it to complete. Now, in the meanwhile, I can tell you um, about the modes, synchronization modes. Um, one of them is full synchronization, which uh, basically builds the initial event history for all patrons in the system. Ideally, it should be done only once per environment to reproduce, uh, to produce and collect all the events related to loans and fees fines that ever took place in the system, well, basically since the dawn of time. And uh, the second mode is user mode, which um, uh, builds the event history for one individual user. This can be helpful to fix errors in automated blocks for a specific user. Now let's go back to our synchronization jobs. Yeah, as you can see, the job status is done, which means that we can go back to this user, try and refresh the page.
So same as before, the user still has the same fine um, to open loans and the patron blocks are back. That happened because the synchronization job has uh, built um, the event history for this particular user from um, uh, the beginning of uh, uh, Folio uh, functioning. And that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. So last team to demo is core functional and Bogdan's going to start, start it off. Yep. Yeah. Hello guys. So let me share my screen. Um, okay. Yeah. So today I'm going to show you a couple of uh, new features uh, related to age to lost uh, items. Um, the first one is uh, related to effect on a lost item fees when um, when an item, when age to lost item is checked in. Um, and uh, here I have an age to lost loan. Um, and as you can see, there is some uh, lost item fees assigned. Oh, let's take a look at them. So there is a uh, lost item fee and a lost item processing fee. And uh, for example, let's let's waive processing fee. Confirm. And uh, let's transfer part of the item fee. Uh, for example, five to this account, transfer, confirm. Okay, and uh, now when, when I <clears throat> check in this item back, I expect that um, lost item fees uh, will be refunded and uh, remaining amount will be canceled. Uh, Uh, but overdue, uh, overdue fine will be also assigned. Okay, let's check out. Um, pattern details, fee fines. Yeah, closed. Um, so as you can see, uh, there is an overdue fine and uh, uh, the lost item fee is canceled and processing fee uh, is waived. Okay. And uh, the similar thing is uh, related to uh, item renew. Um, yeah. So there is uh, um, here you have uh, age to lost loan with fees and fines. Uh, there is processing fee, item fee, and let's just leave them as, as they are and try to renew. Okay, so we need stuff, renew permissions. Okay, so now item has checked out status and uh, fees and fines should be closed. Okay, yeah. So processing fee is canceled and item fee is canceled. This actually works exactly in the same way as for declared lost. So it's just reusing the same logic. That's actually it about my features. Any questions maybe? Yeah, thank you. Looks good, thanks. Uh, Matt Connolly is next. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, uh, hopefully you can see that now. Um, so I'm going to uh, just show a couple of um, uh, refinements to um, users and inventory and uh, following on the theme of loan actions, we'll start out in uh, UI users here. So I've got a, a user with a um, couple of items checked out here. And uh, the first thing we want to make sure is that um, if we have an age to lost item, we can't change the due date because that wouldn't make a great deal of sense. Um, so at, at the moment here, we've got change due date uh, disabled because we don't have any items selected. If I only select our uh, age to lost item, it stays that way. And then of course, if I choose a regular item as well, then I can get into change due date uh, where it tells me that this item is age to lost. But if I try to proceed anyway, and just give these two things a new due date. Yeah, as expected, um, it's successfully changed for the regular item and it does not work on the age to lost item. Still have the same due date there, so that's good. Um, next, uh, we want to um, make sure that uh, an item that, um, well, let me just uh, select a couple of items here to renew. And if I go into renew, then again, we have a case where um, one item is successfully renewed because it has a, a, a more uh, rolling um, renewal policy. This item has a fixed due date, and so it, it doesn't renew because that would not change the due date. But now we have a, a way to override that. So I can um, come in here, select the item where the renewal failed, um, pick a new due date for that. Actually, I think I have to go ahead a little further in this case. Uh, that's November 22nd. And so we need something after that at the moment. Um, and now, we see that our um, due date has been changed again for this one. So uh, we've successfully renewed both of those items. Uh, let's go over now to inventory. And uh, first of all, just in passing, uh, I should point out that um, the item status uh, filter here has been uh, changed from a list of checkboxes like this to a, a multi-select drop-down list here because it was getting a bit unwieldy in the, the previous case. And this works uh, exactly as you'd hope it would. Uh, we can uh, pick out our different statuses here and remove them as we want and get a nice list. So it works exactly as it did before, just a little more compact. Um, and then finally, we've added a highlighting feature here. Uh, so if we're searching for an item by barcode and we get our results here, if we have a long list of items in different holdings now, the uh, result that was matched is highlighted so we can quickly uh, find that and, and work on it as we need to. And I think that's all I've got. So I'll pass it over to Michal. Thank you, Matt. That highlighting looks great. I haven't seen that before, so it's very nice. Um, let me just share my screen here. Um, so I, I will be very quick here. Um, I hope you can see, see the screen here. Um, the first thing I would like to show you is that uh, we added this new setting under uh, inventory settings called holding sources. And by default, we will have two sources uh, defined by the system called folio and mark, but we can also um, define a new one here, which will be marked as, as local. Um, and those uh, sources will be available here. For now, um, we have folio um, as hard, hard coded here on the uh, holdings form, but I, I assume in the future we'll be able to choose uh, from from different sources, and the same will be here on the holdings um, view screen where you will see the the source available. 
Uh, and that's pretty much it. And the, the other thing I would like to show you is something which uh, Sergey uh, worked on, on uh, UI requests. We have this uh, ability to export search results to C CSV. And we, we made a couple adjustments there and we now have a uh, request day available also on that export. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it for me. Thank you. Thanks, Michal. Thanks, guys. All right, so that wraps up our demos. Um, and to conclude, we've got Anton with a quick QA update. Hi, guys. Uh, um, I assume you could see my screen. Yeah. So uh, I don't have a lot to say here. Uh, I just want to congratulate all the teams on timely, uh, timely release of all the modules. It's actually the first time ever that we were able to start the integration week with all modules released. So the uh, bug test um, Honeysuckle system is in the process of upgrading from golden rod to honeysuckle right now. So it's the earliest time we ever were able to start that. So kudos to everyone um, to, um, to release modules on time. And as I said, the migration is happening uh, right now. And the, um, so be on alert that uh, we may find some uh, issues and we'll have to fix them quickly before next Monday so that we can start Bugfest on time. And uh, well, so this is all that I, I have, so I won't stay between your lunch or dinner. So thanks everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Anton. And thanks everybody who demoed and, and everybody else who contributed to this great work. I think we can end this meeting a couple minutes early.